Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Laurie Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It is 6 o'clock here in the morning, Monday morning, October the 25th, and I'm glad to be here. This is One Child Abuse Survivor to Another, and we're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com, and chat room is open, and I have the link in there to um, angerresources.com. I want to finish off that article we left off on uh, Friday, talking about the four different ways of, uh, the four different types of, um, uh, what did they call it? It's a... Uh, uh, let me go back and look at the article here. The, the article is called Communication and Disrespectful Anger, a Poor Match at Best. And it's, uh, they said, you know, angry and hostile people are poor communicators. That's what Dave Decker is writing about. And he said that um, there's uh, there's three styles of communication most frequently used by angry people. And, um, and then there's four ways that uh, there's four styles of communication that actually that that exist and that's the aggressive and then passive aggressive and then passive and then assertive so we sort of left off at the end of that article and i just wanted to finish it up and talking about the assertive portion of it and that's where we're we're going to pick up here so thanks everybody for tuning in i appreciate it and um you know i'm not a counselor not a therapist i don't hold any certificates in those areas i'm just a, a private person paying to do my own blog talk shows i'm a survivor of child abuse and a secondhand victim of domestic violence and you know i just wanted to be one more voice out here for people who may think that they're alone and you know that they're you know there isn't any resources or there isn't any help for us which which really isn't true you know and that's what i wanted to to do was just be one more voice just to say we can do it we can move forward we can heal i do believe this i think you know we have to reach out and get whatever type of help that we can and that we need and really, we're the ones that know what we need. We we should know what we need. And so, you know, you have to reach out if you need a counselor or a therapist or uh, if you just can't cope, you know, you need to call a crisis line or, you know, join a, uh, a uh, adult survivors group, which I find really awesome. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, involved with online group support. So, um, but, you know, there's, a, there's, there's other ways to go about it. And, you know, by reaching out, I just wanted to be one more voice and say, hey, reaching out. That was the best thing I ever did because I was sitting around in silence and uh, just keeping this all to myself. I had told various people and, you know, whatnot over through the course of my lifetime. I had a few friends who actually, you know, probably did care and, um, I said, well, you know, would exchange their what they went through when they were children and, you know, whatnot. But I never really reached out to get any help with it and just stayed very much silent and suffered on my, on my own for many years. And that's why I wanted to... Just be one more voice to say we have to reach out, man. That's I'm so glad I finally did uh, make the decision to do that because it's really, it sort of propelled me through my healing, you know, to have people who can who who would validate the situations that I was in and and and, uh, and help me to get through it, you know. So that's why I just wanted to be one more voice. So you have to listen at your own discretion. I'm talking about abuse of all kinds, of all types. And I'm talking, and that's a very, you know, sensitive subject. And a lot of people, you know, really feel uncomfortable, you know, listening to this whole topic of of abuse and and all the different types of abuse and child abuse and domestic violence. So you have to listen at your own discretion. And you have to know what's good for you to listen to and be very much aware of how you're feeling and whether or not you can handle the information any on any website like this or any type of thing like this. Because you have to know you're in a safe enough place to listen, and only you would know that. So. You have to listen at your own discretion, and young people under the age of eighteen, you know, you have to be, you have to keep yourself safe, especially when you're online and in chat rooms and whatnot. There's all kinds of child sexual predators and crazy people out there trying to get a hold of children uh, to sexually assault them, you know, to exploit them in some way, and you have to be very careful what you're doing. So anybody under the age of eighteen, I would ask that you have permission to listen to my show first of all, and uh, have someone listen to the show with you, an adult, and that way they can. You know, someone you trust, a counselor at school, a teacher, if you don't have a parent who cares, uh, someone who can help you decide whether or not you should be listening. And then they can help you if you have questions and whatnot, right? So that's the, that's very important, right? So we'll get right into this article, and I want to finish up where we we're talking about aggress- aggressive, you know, uh, the aggressive style of communication, right? So the most recognized, oh, we, are, we already did that, but that's right. So we looked at aggressive, we looked at passive aggressive, then we looked at passive uh, communication, right? Being passive, and I, then I wanted to look at um, assertive. And um, the, he says here, 
the final style, which is generally very difficult for angry people to develop and use, is called being assertive. And this is from Dave Decker from uh, Anger Resources, www.angerresources, A-N-G-E-R-E-S-O-U-R-C-E-S.com, Anger Resources. And uh, he says, the final style, which is generally very difficult for angry people to develop and use, is called being assertive. Being assertive is an honest, direct, and respectful exp- expression of your thoughts, feelings, wants, and needs in a way that does not disregard the rights of others. The bottom line messages are, I count and so do you. We both count. Um, being assertive is looking inside yourself, figuring out what your truth is, and then taking the risk to become vulnerable and share what you are experiencing with others in your life. This involves sharing your anger, but it also includes sharing the many other feelings that your anger often hides. And this process has the potential to build your self-esteem and self-confidence and greatly increases the likelihood that you will experience understanding and closeness in your relationships. So it's kind of it's the healthy way to to do this, right? And a lot of people can't don't know how to be assertive. They just know how to be aggressive or passive uh, aggressive like we were talking about on Friday and then the whole issue of being passive which is no good either uh, we have to learn how to become assertive without hurting other people and yet uh, letting other people know hey well this is what I need this is what I'm feeling um, without being hurtful to other people right and I mean I was going you know talking about the whole issue of you know my dysfunctional family not knowing how to do this type of stuff and it's so true we still we still don't know how to communicate you know, we've been so dysfunctional our whole entire lives that there's no real communication. <laughs> it's like when something's wrong, it becomes a screaming match and it becomes uh, a very um, way over the top emotional um, distress type thing for everybody involved. So none of us know how to deal with things properly. We were not shown. My parents didn't know. Uh, they did not communicate that to us. So really. Everything in our home was a crisis, and it was always a screaming match. And if there might be some physical violence involved in there too at the time, right? So, the you know we never learned how to do that. And then as adults, we have to go and try to learn how to be assertive without being abusive, and you know still be able to communicate what our needs and wants are, and effectively let people know that hey, this is this is how I'm feeling. This is what I what I would like to see happen. You know, but we both count. We both you know both of our our uh, situations count, I count, you count. And I think that's where we have to really remember that, yeah, that's very true. We count just as well as the other person does. And um, so we don't count more than the other person, and we don't count less than the other person. We just count the same as the other person, right? And so I think, but if the other person is not going to allow you that, then uh, then that's not your problem, right? <laughs> that's their problem. That's the whole issue with the, uh, this whole anger management thing. And I think, you know, as we we still have to, to, to try and because if we're all trying we're all going to get along a lot better you know in our relationships with our family members or whoever it is that we're having these difficulties communicating with you know so i think it's just so important to to try this stuff and for me it's hard it's very very hard so it's not something that's if you're not used to doing it it's not easy to do right you have to think about it right so it says here uh, dave decker says being assertive is behaving in ways that demonstrate your strength, stand up for your legitimate personal rights, and give voice to your own perspective. But it is doing this without the expectation that the other person will back down, ag- agree with you, or do what you want them to do. The real goal of being assertive is clear communication, not necessarily getting what you want. It says, when you are assertive, you open a door and invite others to join you in a constructive dialogue. And this may lead to a resolution, or it may not. In the end, it does not. If it does not, you are still the one who is responsible for deciding how to best take care of yourself if the issue or concern arises again in the future. So the important part of this is that you have been honest and open and let others know who you are and how you experience your world. It's quite interesting. Some examples of being verbally assertive include the following. You might say things like, I feel angry about what you just said. I'd like to spend time together tomorrow. And I... and I really appreciate what you just did for me, or this is things that we could say being assertive. Or after you've talked about your partner's lateness and nothing has changed, behavioral assertiveness involves your deciding to do something to take care of yourself and perhaps go in a separate car to family gatherings so that you don't continue to feel so frustrated and resentful at those times. I guess we're supposed to look for ways that if the other person doesn't change their behavior, right, which was which is very possible, that... If someone's doing something to us that we don't like, right, that's really 
that isn't right. I mean, it's just that people are still need people need work. You know, um, you know, we have we have to try to look for ways that will change that for ourselves. You know, and uh, whatever way that is. I mean, sometimes we can't go to family gatherings in a separate car. You know what I mean? He, he's presenting an idea here, but I think that sometimes we know that things don't work out because the other people won't change their behavior. And they won't change the way they feel, right? But as long as we're keeping an accountability for ourselves, I think that's the whole huge thing, right? Because then we're not turning into these ugly uh, abusers, you know, either whether we're being passive-aggressive, whether we're being aggressive. Um, that's the whole issue behind anger management. We can control ourselves. We're not, we're not necessarily going to be able to control what other people do or, or think or say. And that's a fact, you know. I mean, other people are supposed to be responsible for their own behavior, and even just like we are, we can't expect other people to uh, behave a certain way and then us not, right? That's why I'm really interested in this stuff because, you know, that's what I'm learning is that, you know, I need to keep a check on my behavior and then other people's behaviors, you know, I mean, if I don't like something they're doing, then, it's, you know, I'm talking within my family or, you know, someone even in a, in a at work in a boss uh you know, supervisor type thing, right? If if I need to discuss something with somebody and they still don't change their behavior, um, there isn't much you can do about that, you know, um, as far as like making them see things differently. If they see things uh, one way and don't want to change their mind, but we don't have to become the abuser then. We can try to figure out uh, something else out instead, right, that's more healthy, like a healthier way to deal with things and um, not become so aggressive or so, or just being passive and all the time and letting people run all over us, right? There has to be a happy medium in there. And if I think if we learn how to do it, we're we're better off, right? It says if you find yourself getting angry more than more often than you would uh or yeah, it says if you find yourself getting angry more often than you would like, start to think about and notice how you communicate with those around you. Begin to identify where you might want to become more assertive in your daily life. Working toward becoming more assertive can make an, a significant difference in how you feel about yourself and how those around you feel about you and in how much anger, hostility, and resentment you carry with you. So it just kind of shows us where we are, you know. It's it's like if we learn, we try to practice this stuff and learn how to do it, you know. Um, we'll be able to see the areas that we need to work on, and that's just with anything that we're working on, you know, like uh, any type of thing that we're trying to um, to learn how to, to do. You know, and it's it's unfortunate that we all have to, you know, that a lot of us have to learn this stuff. <laughs> it should have been taught to us, you know, by our parents, by the very people that should have should have shown us by example and also, you know, taught us how to behave in this life and how to get along. And actually, so many parents are absent. You know, they're just not there or they are just abusive and we pick up their behaviors or whatever. And then so there's also good parents out there who really do the best they can and then the kids, for some reason you know, just don't go that way. And that's unfortunate because they have every reason to have, you know, these good behaviors and for, for whatever reason in their in their their lives something's caused them to, you know, to behave that way. But you know, when you're when you're just going by what by the information that you were given as a child, you know, and you're trying to figure it out as an, as an adult that that was wrong. <laughs> it was completely bad information. Um, you know, and a bad way to behave. You have to try to change your own behavior. It's not easy. And um because you know, we have to take a look uh, a hard look at ourselves and say, "Whoa, what am I doing? You know, how am I behaving? Obviously things are not working right. I need to learn how to to change this around, you know, to benefit myself as well as others, right?" So, you know, it's important, you know, that we do take a look at this stuff and, and do what we can to get some help with it. And this website's awesome. I like it. They, you can call them, guys. They have telephone numbers here, Mike, uh, Michael Obsatz and, and Dave Decker. They've got uh, their, you know, contact information here if you want to talk to them about, you know, um, any kind of probably anger management or anger-related question. And, they, you know, they have a little section on here. You can actually contact them with questions. And it's just really cool. Like, this is a great website, and I hope you will go and check this out. And uh, the next portion that I, of this um, website that I want to take a look at is, um, there's a couple, actually. One is called Taking the Steps to Stop the Abuse. And then there's another one. He ta Dave Decker actually has some articles on here about um, the whole issues of... Uh, domestic abuse and also steps for raising your empowered children you know he's got 21 skills for raising empowered children from raising nonviolent children in a violent world that's actually mike obsatz's uh, article and um dave decker's got um 
some other stuff on abuse and whatnot and, and domestic violence, like, you know, impact of abuse on women by Dave Decker, a myths about domestic abuse and whatnot, because he's talking about the whole issue within relationships, within families, you know, between partners, and, and they're talking a lot about the uh, men's issues, you know what I mean, men's um, anger management issues. But, hey, I think it could work for women, too. I don't see why it would be re- really any different. Um, women can be abusers, too. Women can be batterers, too, and... Uh, you know, anyone can be an abuser. Anyone can be out of control. Anyone can, um, you know, have anger management problems. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not just the guys, you know what I mean? A lot of people like to just point fingers at men, but, you know, I've known so many abusive women in my lifetime that, I mean, I just know that <laughs> that's just not the truth. And, um, you know, we can all hide behind, you know, the fact that people like to think that it's only men who abuse, but that is actually completely wrong. And, Women have been abusing since time began as well. Um, it's just that there's more women being abused. That's the problem. The the amounts are definitely over the top as far as women being abused and 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 you know. But some men are abused too, and we just have to, you know, and 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 in same sex relationships and whatnot. And there's different, you know, partners will abuse their partners if they don't um, decide not to do it. It's a decision, you know. Abuse is a choice, right? And so we have to get help with this stuff. If we, I don't want to be abusive to anybody. I certainly don't don't want to pass off my uh, my survivor issues as far as you know dealing with trying to learn how to handle and behave myself. I, I certainly don't want to abuse people. But then again, I have to learn how to be assertive and learn how to um, so that I don't get walked all over, right? Because that's what I was doing: stuffing the anger, uh, letting people take advantage of me quite often because I didn't want to confront the situation. Or if I had to confront it, it would blow up out of out of control. It would be it would be some uh, like an explosion, and then I'd have to quit my job because I'd be like, man, I can't even work here anymore because um, I'd be so angry. I'd be like, I can't even handle this, you know. And, and after making a scene and causing this, you know, this huge scene, you know, it's like, what do you do? You know, it's kind of like, well, I'm quitting, you know. So I used to quit lots of jobs because of that, and. Um, and relationships were always an issue for me as far as, uh, you know, and, I, and you know, I'm very much a, um, you know, like guys, you know, I have no problem really with, with men in that respect, but if I have a problem with relationships, you know, and commitments. And I was like, man, you know, if I if I get married, then I'm stuck with this person, you know, and so marriage was out of the question, you know, because I've been running my whole life because of the abuse that I suffered. I haven't been running really, but I've been running away from everything that, uh, that means that uh, uh, something that would hold me to something, right? So I mean, jobs is like really easy for me just to quit a job, whatever, because this way, you know, I can. It's my choice. I don't have to take that, right? So I was kind of self-sabotaging all the time, uh, in different ways, you know, and and um, not learning how to to just work through things and trust my instincts and uh, you know, be assertive and 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 yet not be abusive. So this is it. This has really affected my life in every way. And so that's why it's, it's so important that we do learn how to do this stuff and uh, get, you know, the uh, the best for ourselves as well as, you know, being there for other people too and, and you know, not pushing our stuff on people and, and abusing them just because we were abused. That's that whole cycle of abuse. And also not letting people uh, walk all over us and be re-victimized as an adult survivor, right? That's horrible. So we have to do, we do, we are very much responsible for our behavior now. You know, as children, we really couldn't help... Um, you know, I talk about this a lot on my shows, you know, we, when you're a child and you're being abused, you know, there's really nothing, it's not your fault and you certainly didn't deserve it. Well, I, I know I didn't. And, um, you know, it's you're stuck in that. That's not, It's being put on you, you know. It was, it was put on me, you know. I couldn't really do anything about it. But as an adult, let me tell you, I can, I can um, be completely responsible for myself, you know. I don't, you know, it is completely my responsibility to not abuse people. It was my parents' responsibility to not abuse me, but they didn't choose to do that, you know, and my siblings, right, not just me, uh, and each other, right? They they didn't choose to take responsibility for their behavior, and so they 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 destroyed our family, you know, and I could do the same thing. I could choose to um, not take responsibility for my behavior and destroy everybody around me as well, and myself. But I don't want to do that, you know what I mean? Because that's what I was kind of doing for a long time. And then I started stuffing the anger, and then everybody, and then it was destroying me on the inside. It was killing me literally on the inside. And so, you know, we're very much responsible for our behavior. And as adult survivors, you know, be, just because I'm a survivor and I and I'm 
and have been abused as a child does not give me the right to go and be pushing people around or trying to manipulate people into doing things just because I was abused, you know. That's absolutely ridiculous. But we do count. And we do matter just as well as the next guy. And that's what I, I'm, you know, I, I'm all about is like saying, well, I count just as much as the next guy. And I deserve to have a good life just as much as that next person over there. And it's up to me to make sure it happens. Because as a child, you know, you can't help what happens, in, you know, when you're a child. I mean, I can't go back and change that, you know. But I can change the way that I feel about life. I can change the way that I feel uh, about myself. I can change the way that I feel um, you know about what my needs are, what I need out of this life, and I can, and, and it is ultimately my responsibility to go and 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 make it happen, you know, and, and not at the expense of other people. We're talking, you know, um, to make it happen the right way, the correct way, you know, and that is to correct all these behavioral problems that I had from growing up in this home that was completely, you know, dysfunctional <laughs> and abusive. So it's like, it's very hard, you know, to have to learn this stuff at the age of 40-something years old. But, you know, I mean, it, it's worth it. It's so worth it because I'm I'm moving on. I'm healing, whereas the rest of my dysfunctional family is, is just going to stay the same, you know, and um, unless they decide at some point to straighten up and get some help, you know. And... Um, or that they even should. Although they they quite most of them don't think that they even need help, but they do. <laughs> they're so ignorant. It's not even funny. Um, they're so bad. You know, they're just so so abusive still in their own ways, passive aggressive type, um, or just being flat out aggressive, right? And that's what I was doing. I was doing the same exact thing. I can't say that I wasn't guilty of that. And so that's why you know it's so important that we don't just say, oh well, it's, I'm perfect, and then those people over there they they're the ones that that did all this stuff, you know. We have to take a good, hard look at our own behavior. I, that's what my parents needed to do, see. But they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't take responsibility for their own behavior. They wouldn't look at what they were doing and say, my God, we are, what are we doing? You know what I mean? We are, And they were court-ordered because of child abuse charges to go to counseling. They were brought up on, on child abuse charges, and they, they should have known at that point, hey, we got busted. We Look what we're doing to our family. I mean, look what we're doing to each other. This is ridiculous. We need to get help. Uh, and they they were ordered to go to counseling. They went twice, and that was about it. And so, you know, they they did not want to be responsible for their behavior. They wanted to hurt each other. You know what I mean? That's why it continued on. They They didn't want to change their behavior. They wanted to continue to pound and smash and break that family and destroy it. And that's exactly what they did. And, um, you know, that's bad, right? I mean, you have the option to, like, get some help and even have a court-ordered uh, judge telling you that the, you that you need help and your family needs help and the children will be removed if they don't. And, and here the parents sit there and, okay, to the judge, no problem, don't take our kids away, you know, we, you know, and then, I'll, and then, the, and then they get home and it's back to the old, you know, uh, destruction game, you know what I mean? Let's, let's see how far we can take this sort of thing, right? And this this is really sad because my parents had the option and actually were, were ordered to go get help and they didn't do it. And so um, even people that are ordered and court ordered to do things won't even do it. You know, we have to be responsible for our behavior. If my parents would have done that, then the, the abuse would have stopped and they would have got some help for us. And you know, so I can't just say, well, you know, if it's everybody else's problem. I don't have a problem, but everybody else does. And knowing full well that I do have an anger issue and an anger management problem, and I've got anger issues, and you know, and and have to learn how to deal with them. And yet, if I was to sit there and try to be like them and say, "Well, I, you know, it's not my fault; it's it's her fault, or it's his fault, or whatever," trying to blame it on somebody else, trying to say, "Oh, I'm perfect; the other person is always at fault." That's the same behavior that my parents did, and that's why you know the family was destroyed. Uh, because they would never take a look at their own behavior and say, "Man, we've got to get some help. Look at what we were doing," you know. And um, they didn't care, you know. And and I don't. And, and I know they didn't care because they did that for how long? They were married for uh, uh, forty, almost fifty years, you know. And they were so destructive to each other from day one. And so they spent fifty years. They created fifty years of hell for for their family, and I mean that's horrible, you know. <laughs> and shame on them, right? The shame belongs to them, absolutely it does. And uh, but as a, as an adult, it's my responsibility. It is our responsibility to keep our behavior in check and not pass that cycle of abuse on. So it's so important that we don't do that, right? 
And, I mean, I, I, I mean, that's the whole issue behind abuse, right, is, is that we have to be responsible for our, all of us, for our own behavior, and not abuse people, whether it's our children, ourselves, uh, other people at work, uh, people in our families, any kind of relationship, friendships, our neighbors. You know, we have to keep ourselves in check, and that's what's wrong with this world. People won't do that. And they just take everything out on everybody else and then cry the blues. Woe is me. Poor me. You know, I never get anything. It never, nothing works out for me. And, you know, in the meantime, they're, they're, they're ruining every relationship that they possibly could, are in because of their, they won't take a look at themselves, right? So here's the foundations of effective anger management. And, um, this was on Dave Decker's, uh, page that he, you know, his little section where he has stuff written down there the articles that he's written and whatnot. And um, this is, he, he lists off some stuff here. He says, one, anger is a normal, natural human emotion. Number two, anger is very different from cynicism, hostility, withdrawal, abuse, and violence. Um, number three, how we express anger is learned primarily from the important people in our childhood. Number four, both men and women receive strong cultural messages about how to experience and express anger. Number five, we need to be honest with ourselves about our anger and how it affects us and others. Number six, our anger is our responsibility. That's right. And number seven, how we express your anger, how you, how we express your anger is a choice. So how we express our own anger is a choice. That's a, right because abuse is a choice. It's a it's a behavioral thing, right? You, people don't have to abuse people, but they do. They choose to do it. And that's what people don't realize, that abuse is an actual choice that we make. So when people are out there beating on their children and burning them, stabbing them, raping them, and uh, doing all these horrible, horrific things to them, throwing them out on the street, uh, killing them, right? They are doing that at their own choice. They're choosing to do that. You know, when my mom bashed my head in with that rolling pin, she chose to do that. She picked up that rolling pin and she beat me with it. And she she could have killed me. And the thing is, is that uh, she chose to do that. And she was so angry and so abusive and violent that she could have killed me. And that was a choice she was making. How much, I mean, that is so incredibly wrong. So when somebody, you know, or a partner, you know, so my, my dad, when he, was, when he was abusing my mom physically and verbally and every other way, he was choosing to do that, you know. I mean, he, 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 that was his choice to do. And, and see, this is what it, we, we, everyone needs to know abuse is a choice. And we have the right, we have the option to not abuse somebody. So we got to think very carefully before we do stuff how we're going to treat that person and not abuse the people around us. It doesn't mean that we have to let people walk all over us and be sensitive that we are abused. No. What it means is that we have the choice to walk away from the situation until we can calm down. We have the right to and the, and the choice to say, look, I've got to take a time out because I don't want to say something hurtful to you. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen unless I get a time out. You know, uh, parents could do a lot better job with their children and stop cursing and uh, hurting their children and beating on their children and, and killing their children if they just take a time out. Parents need a time out, too. We all do. And so we have to learn how to uh, not abuse people. Abuse is a choice. It totally is. Number eight, acting out or ventilating anger is not helpful in effectively discharging it. Number nine, we often lapse into destructive patterns of expressive anger with those around us. And ten, handling anger poorly creates significant consequences in many areas of our lives, and that's the truth. Uh, Eleven, handling anger effectively promotes self-esteem, self-confidence, self-respect, and the potential for trust and intimacy in relationships. Twelve, we can change how we experience and express the anger we feel. I believe that. Thirteen, changing what we do with disrespectful anger is an ongoing and lifelong process. And I think that's the whole issue. It's something that we have to be aware of all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's the whole issue. It's not something that we can just do for six months and then just give up on it. You know, this is a lifelong issue. And uh, this world would be a much better place if people would learn how to... How to uh, effectively manage their anger, right, and including myself, and that's what I'm trying to do. The next one I want to look at tomorrow morning, we have about a minute left here, I want to take a look at uh, Taking the Steps to Stop the Abuse by Dave Decker, and that's uh, from, I'll give you the website again, www.angerresources.com, A-N-G-E-R-E-S-O-U-R-C-E-S.com, and you can go there and check this out, Taking the Steps to Stop the Abuse, 
And um, this is a great article, and I, I want to look at this tomorrow. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Tonight, we're going to have Rosara Torres, author Rosara Torres on Dreamcatchers Talk Radio, www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Dreamcatchers, 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. She's going to talk about abuse hidden behind the badge. Uh, Rosara, is, uh, T- Rosara Torres is an author, and she is a domestic violence uh, survivor, and, uh, you know, um, two two times from uh, uh domestic from husbands who were in who who were in, in the service like in the the civilian service so police officers and whatnot so she's got uh, she's very um she's very much an advocate you know against to, to stop domestic violence and especially to stop what's going on with what's being hidden behind the badge uh men in uniform who beat their wives and and, and beat their children and abuse their families, right, and then hide behind the badge, right? So we're going to talk about that tonight. I hope you will join us, 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks, everybody, for being here, and uh, have a great day. Keep reaching out, you know. Never give up. Never, ever, ever give up. And that's the biggest message I could possibly throw out there this morning is never give up. You know, two of my brothers gave up, and, um, you know, what what did it get them? You know, absolutely nothing. They got no peace in this life, and they, they didn't even get the chance to experience one one good day um, of a healthy uh, way of feeling and looking at this world, you know, because they committed suicide. One of my brothers committed suicide um, at the age of 33, and then another brother died of a drug overdose in a shelter here in Calgary at the age of 43. And the two of them, you know, had these horrific lifestyles, and, you know, they were abused as children. They grew up in my home. That We all grew up in the same home. And um, they did not think that life was worth sticking around for and I'm so glad that I made the decision to stay here because I was following in their footsteps and I was always contemplating ending my life and you know that I that I could end my life you know and I never never attempted it but it was always in the back of my mind and I'm so glad that I stuck around and decided to stick around long enough for things to change and for me to change the way that I feel and to learn to love myself and learn to care about myself. And that's what you have to do. So if you're suffering in this, make sure you reach out. You call a, a crisis line. If you can't get a hold of somebody and talk to somebody that you need to talk to, you know, and you just can't cope, you call a crisis line and you just say, I need help. <laughs> I Plain and simple, I need help. I need somebody to listen to me. And I need somebody to hear what happened to me. You know what I mean? And I, I'm telling you what, if you can't cope, you reach for those crisis lines because those people... They're like you and me. They wouldn't be doing that if they didn't really care. And, you know, it takes a special person to sit there and do that. And they they care about your life so much that they're willing to sit on the other end of a crisis line. You know, <laughs> let me tell you, that's somebody who does care. So, um, because, I mean, our families won't do that for us. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, we can, you know, I can't call my family and say, hey, I need help. You know, um I've actually already tried that, right? And they don't care. They're just like, whatever, F off, you know. Um, And that's the truth. They really don't care. And it's because they were my abusers, all of them. So even my siblings were very abusive towards me. So it's not like, uh, you know, they really care if I need help or was thinking about killing myself. They really don't. So because they didn't care that my other brothers killed themselves either. See, that's the sad part. So, you know, quite often we don't have somebody in our lives who can be there for us, right? And that's why it's very important to realize there's those crisis lines out there. And those people do care or they wouldn't be doing it. And they care, probably care a lot more than our own families do, let me tell you that. So you make a phone call if you have to. But whatever you do, you don't ever give up. Because I'm telling you what, if you give up, then you lose every opportunity to be on the other side that so many of us are on, which is the side of peace in my heart, which I never thought I would have. I, I never thought I would have peace in my heart, and so I'm just to- I'm hoping everybody will hang on long enough to experience that because it's something that if you've never experienced peace in your heart and all of a sudden you have peace in your life and in your heart, I mean I'm telling you what I was in hell, I was in hell and I've been I've been I was redeemed out of hell, you know what I mean, and um, so I'm so glad to be on the other side, right? So I hope that everybody will join me, right, and stay with us and don't give up ever, right? You do count, you do matter. And I don't care what anybody says, you know, or what anybody said to you. Uh, You do count, you do matter, and you deserve to have a good life, and you do deserve to heal and move forward and and experience some peace in your life, right? So take good care, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Uh, I'll be on my shows tonight, too. You can check out the show page. But um, we'll be back on here tomorrow uh, looking at the rest of this. So take good care, okay? Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.